On a cool autumn night in Bradenton, Florida, three friends set out on an overnight fishing expedition in a 12-year-old boat. It was a decision they would soon regret. Some of the footage in the story was taped as events unfolded on the days that followed. On October 16, 1989, Steve Watson, his cousin Brian, and their friend David set out into the Gulf of Mexico to a spot they had fished just two nights before, beyond the sight of land. We launched the boat and headed out approximately 20 miles, anchored down, hit rock. Shortly after dropping anchor, Steve realized the boat was in trouble. I noticed that the boat was sitting kind of low when there was a little bit of water. Hey, hang on. I think we're taking some water here. You better check the bilge pump. It's supposed to be an automatic bilge pump. It's supposed to kick on whenever there's water. The battery's gone dead. Check it out. Hang on. Of course, we're scared of sharks, but I really wasn't worried about sharks. I was just worried about being out 20 miles offshore, not being able to see land. We just started searching for lights or any sign of another boat. First sign of morning, we seen a, a blur of something way out that we thought might have been land. We didn't know what it was, but it was the only thing in sight. We decided, with the jellyfish being bad and with the gas coming out and burning us, we figured it would be best off to try to swim for it. I'm a very panicky person. I like for Steven to be there, and when Steven's not there on time, I start to worry. So I, the minute I woke up and he wasn't there, I was very worried. By 7 a.m. the next morning, Steve's fiance, Cindy Hooper, called the Coast Guard. So I filled them in on all the information about the boat, and they said that they'd take it from there. Lieutenant Mark Feldman was involved in the helicopter search. Naturally, as soon as you go out there, you're all charged up, wanting to find these people. As the case goes on, and you're thinking, oh, these guys might not be in this search area, because you're seeing just about every boat that's out there, and, and you, you're continually getting frustrated that it's not the boat that you're searching for. At sea, Petty Officer Tom Botzenhart took part in the search. It's very difficult to spot someone in the open water. It's critical that you try and find some way to maintain your attention. After four or five hours of searching, uh, the water looks the same everywhere. Back on shore, David's mother waited for any word. When I thought about things happening to David and never seeing him again or having to bury him, I just don't know how I was going to deal with that. I just, you know, it's a child. You can't replace a child. By late afternoon, there was still no sign of the three friends lost at sea. A Filipino freighter was in the area when its crewmen spotted something in the water. After so many miles, my body pretty much tired out and my mind took over. It was just pretty much a will to live. I wanted to live. I knew I was going to live. So it was either make it or die. Steve was alone. His friends were nowhere in sight. We swam approximately 
two to three miles. Dave and Brian started tiring, so they told me just to go ahead without them. And I just kept swimming and swimming. He had been swimming for 10 hours when he was finally picked up by the freighter. They basically saved my life. I'm in debt to them forever, really. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I might not be sitting here right now. Sweet, he's weak. We got him. Right, we got him. Get him over. Get him over. I felt terrible that my cousin and my best friend were out there in the water with a good chances of not ever coming back. It was the worst death I could probably think of to drown or be eaten by a shark. Anything but that. Oh, the day that they found Steve. I was sure they'd find David and Brian, and when night came and they didn't find him, I didn't think they would ever find him again. You do get depressed at the fact that why am I out here? The chance of these guys being uh, being alive are, are slim. When we continue, I just was afraid I was going to have to bury him with or without a body. I didn't know if I'd ever even see his body. 